All right, I'm taking off. I've transformed my little camper, or my work van, which is also a food truck, into a camper van. So here's a little work table. I gotta still make traps and stuff. Um, this is where I'm gonna sleep, right here. There's my bedding and stuff. Just throw it in here, which is the futon, the cover. I'm actually gonna sleep right in here. Uh, I got, in case it gets cold, I also have a, a couple, um, these are sleeping bags, which I also can lay down on the ground of the car. Get some tools up here. I got, this is all my Hornet gear. Uh, that's all the trap gear, my Onsen gear. This is the elixir, my special elixir that drives me crazy. Cooking, you know, all my stuff for cooking. And I can eat here too, so I can cook right here, eat, so uh, I'm good to go. Got my power hookup, got my navigation and um, headsets. I got I got to pick up uh, lights, but here's some additional lights here. I've got lights here. This USB little, little great little guys. I can have light up here, really bright light. So a lot, everything is solar powered. And uh, let's hit the road. Yeah, this is a good sign. The weather is uh, very uh, kind of, let's just burn off this cloud cover. You can see there's tons of traffic. I'm headed off in those mountains over there. Uh, they call this uh, the Japanese Alps, or some of them anyway. Uh, over 70% of Japan is mountainous. So, in a way, that's good. Uh, it provides a barrier for us from Fukushima. So I got massive barrier, plus I've got the uh, hydro streams. And, um, and also, ultimately, if there's sea level rising, there's always an there's you know, always an opportunity to move inward. So, you know, living on a, on a country that has 70% mountains isn't necessarily a bad thing. Plus the resources, the water, you know, a lot of benefit there. Just a little side note. All right, I left the main highway and now off into the mountains. So beautiful, you can see here. You know, these little towns, little note, um, are pretty much dying in Japan. Everyone's moving to these cities. And it's a real shame because, um, you know, there are literally hundreds of empty houses, they're called IKEA houses here in Japan, that are family owned that they don't want to get rid of because of their heritage. And all these rice fields now are slowly uh, going to waste. Um, and they're losing, you know, the, uh, their ability to produce their rice which is having to go out to uh, companies like I'm working for, co-ops, that are taking it over, but they're not producing a better product, I would say. They're producing a lesser product, and I can talk about that at another date. So really beautiful, look at this. Look at the, uh, the, the growth above the, uh, in the river, in the, from the mountains. It really uh, feel like I'm in a video game <laughs> this drive through this very curvy, no signs uh, underpass. These, uh, this is actually for rocks above. And actually now here's a tunnel. You rarely see this. This is actually a double tanker, uh, double tanker trailer. Not sure what it's carrying. Maybe when it goes around this corner, you get to see it. See that? Look how much that whole tanker is filling the entire road. That's how narrow. I would be pretty scary job driving that thing in the mountains like this guy is. Look at that. <laughs> Kirby, there's a wide truck carrying God knows what. You know, you could be in Bavaria or somewhere in Germany. Look at this, beautiful. I'm only uh, 20 kilometers away really very traditional Japanese look at that there with the mount with the clouds halfway down and there's a ski resort there we're in ha this is uh, Hakuba so I finally made it and there's even snow you can see snow up in the mountains there Wow so I'm here in a place called Hakuba and uh, I've uh, met another local who uh, has seen Osuzume he has a pension called Hakuba house so if you come if you come to Hakuba, Hakuba House is his location. You could meet um, um, Grant is his name. He's the owner. You say, hey, Mike Trout, 
uh, uh, heard your information from Mike Trout. So he's given me permission to set up traps behind his property. He's also, and it's directly across from my client's place. So that's good. Um, and he's actually going to make phone calls today uh, to folks that may, you know, beekeepers and other stuff. Because what I'm trying to do today is reconnaissance. Um, and um, actually I actually want to get some uh, traps out to see if, if I can uh, have some action. Because today is a nice day. It's a warm day today. So the hornets will be out. And I'm also looking for a particular kind of tree, a hardwood tree, like an oak that has sap. So I'm going to be driving around and doing that. So there's a number of things I'm trying to do right now. Connect with the locals, uh, survey the location. I've seen that his property. I have a plan of action for that. And I'm just here picking up a couple resources in Komori, Komori, which is like a hardware store where I met Grant. And we just talked for about an hour. So he's going to make some phone calls. So it's all good. Moving forward.